I'm going to show you how to do a simple nonlinear regression procedure on R. Uh, I'm going to use the example of the water retention curve. I did an example in Python with the, the data from Wikipedia, but because I already have this script done, I'm just going to go show you how the script works instead of typing it uh, while I'm recording. So I'm going to get the script here. So this is the R script for fitting water retention curve. It's on it's on my GitHub. I'm just gonna copy it here. I'm gonna open R, and I showed you in the other video how to install R in Windows. What we're gonna do? Remember that you could paste the the script in this window here. It would execute this the the script, but it's always better that you uh, create an uh, an R script, a true R script and you type or you paste your script here and then you go ahead and save it as an R script. So let's call this anilin.r and this is going to be our script. The script saving procedure, you can save it here, directly here, or you can type Ctrl S. When I saved the first time, I did it by Ctrl S. Because this is kind of small, before I show you, before I run this script, I'm going to show you what each, what each command here does. I'm going to open here a notepad. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to increase the font size so you can see it better. Okay. You don't need to do any of that. I'm just doing that so it's easier for you to see what's written here. So let's analyze this script. This is a nonlinear regression script. You can see here that I'm not calling any libraries. There are libraries for nonlinear regression, which are much better than the standard library of R, but we're not using that. So I'm not declaring anything like library and calling the library like you like I did in the other video. But if you wanted to install a library, you just go in here to libraries and select a repository. Actually you don't need to select the repository, but just go here to and install packages. It will open a mirror. You can select a country and then it will take you to the options with all the the libraries that R has submitted to the repository. But we're not going to need libraries for this with this simple code. So first, this here, same thing as in Python, is a comment. This the comments is just for the, the coder to remember what he did or what he or she did. It's it's not read by the program. So this here is the data set similar to what we did in Python, but this we don't need to declare np array or nothing like that the array here in, in r is declared as with the c and here with the parentheses so it's separated by commas as well i'm using equal here so this is the water potential the water potential for those who don't know do not know what the water retention curve is this is just the x variable and this theta here is the y variable you can import this data from txt, DAT, Excel, but the simplest way is just to put the data here. So if you have your data, you can just place your data here. For water content, this is water potential, or metric potential, or capillary potential, and this is the water content in any units that you wish to use. Or if you're fitting someone else, this is X and this is Y. Here I'm transforming h x for logarithm scale this is the natural logarithm so base e the euler's base euler constant here and this command here it's a plot command see you don't actually don't need to import the plotting library like we did in python but there is a very good plotting library in r which is the ggplot or something like that so this 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 would do the plot 
And this here, it's the nonlinear least squares procedure. So the nonlinear least squares procedure is called NLS in R. It's a nonlinear least square. This adjust here, I'm just, just going to call it for fit. It's, I'm just calling the result from the fitting procedure, from this procedure here. I'm just giving the name fit. It was adjusted before, but I can change it for everyone, whatever I want. Here displays the regression statistics, statistics. So this is the output from the nonlinear regression. This shows what's stored in this here. And this is the summary of the nonlinear regression procedure. So you're going to see that those are different things and it's important that there are different things. And this is the main advantage of R over Python. R gives you the, the regression statistics much more easily than if you needed to do this in Python. And this is the plot of the predicted line versus the, the logarithm of the water potential or X here. I'm using logarithm because the water retention curve, the sigmoidal function, so it, easier to visualize in logarithm scale. So let's take a look here at the fitting procedure. So NLS is the nonlinear least squares function. This is your equation. So you enter this equation here. In our case, we're entering the water retention curve, which is the sigmoidal function, sort of a sigmoidal or a logarithm function. This is your Y, it's this here. If you ha have any other date or any other variable here, for example, if it's, if it's y, you declare y here. This is our x, so I'm declaring this here in this function at x. Q, QR, QS, alpha, n are parameters or parameter or fitting parameters. So if you look at this water retention curve, you can have four or five fitting parameters, and these are going to be fitted, fitted when this this we're going to calculate the best fit of these param parameters when this equation is fit to this data. So, for nonlinear regression, like I mentioned in other videos, we're going to need starting values. So, these are the starting, starting values. You, you can check the rect video. I talked a little bit more about that. If you don't get convergence of, of your procedure, I'm not going to talk details here about nonlinear regression. You can change those initial values here. But those initial values are the initial guess which the procedure will do to start its iterations and it might or may or may not find convergence. It usually does if your values are not really unreasonable, if your data is good and if your model is able to conform to your data. Okay, so let's go back here to R. This is just was just to show you and just fit gonna Let's just run this step by step. Don't need to run the comments. Let's run the data. You can just right click and execute or you could do control R, control R. You read the data, didn't do anything, but if you call the data here, it's stored in your memory. Okay, let's do the transformation. You can run this all at the same time and just running step by step, but just to show you. So LH store here the logarithm of the water potential let's do the plot so this is the plot so this is theta and this is r and this is this is h and this is in logarithm space so you see a nice sigmoidal function when you run this in as a logarithm i could run this in linear space you see that it look, looks a lot like an exponential and it's not really too good to visualize so let's put lh here Let's run this again. Okay, so this is our plot. Let's run, I'm gonna change the name here just so you know what this is, what this is it. I'm gonna run this line here. So it fit the data, there's nothing weird about it, didn't complain. See the red here, it's not complaining, it, is, it just run normally, it just didn't output really anything. I don't need the function print here to show the data here like I did in, in, in Python. So this is the output. Let me just increase the, the font here so you can see it better. Okay. 
So this here is the output. I asked for this fit and this is the result of fit. This is the equation that I'm fitting regarding the data and this here are the fitted values. So it, it outputs you some statistics. The residual sums of squares, so after convergence, this is the, the minimization of the sums of squares of the residuals resulted in this here. Iterations to convergence, six iterations. So it converged to those parameters from the initial parameters that we put here in six steps or six iterations. The tolerance is the value that it, there, there's var several values that you can establish so it stops the procedure. So this is the convergence tolerance and uh, it, it's indicating here that I, I achieved convergence tolerance uh, with a tolerance of 2.923 uh, to, to power of minus 6 times 10 to the minus 6. So this is parameters that you can change. You can change this tolerance. You can master those values. Like you change the num maximum number of iterations. But I'm not going to show you how to do this because we just want to show you something very simple. So let's take a look now at the summary of the fit or of the summary of this output data. Summary is an internal command from R. And this is very important to us because here you have the estimated values. This is the same that we, we saw here. But now you have the standard error or the error associated with the estimate, the standard error, the, the T value associated with the significance and the significance of the, of the parameter. So this here indicates that all, parameter are, all parameter, parameters are, are statistic, statistically different from zero. Or uh, there's other ways of saying that, but the simple simplest way of interpre interpreting this is saying that those parameters, those estimates, are statistically different from zero. You want that because if if the estimate is not statistically different from zero, your parameter is not statistically different from zero, and maybe there's no point in of it being your model. So this is good that the parameter parameters are statistically different from zero. And this is the significance codes. So there's the residual standard error and the numbers of degrees of freedom and the tolerance here and the number of iterations to uh, convergence. So you might want to check the, the R square. It's not really good to, to talk about R square in uh, linear regression but to calculate the r square you can just do a simple linear regression of the observed values this here should be fit it's reading because i i, I have i have uh, run this before so okay oh let's come back let's go back here actually i forgot to show you so let's plot this here I'm going to have to run this everything now because I only changed the, the value now. So this here calls for the predicted line. So these are the points and this is the best fit line. When I call predict, I am predicted based on this fit here. So I'm choosing the color red and this is the best fit line. Besides looking at the statistics here, you, can, you should always look at your graph to see if your fit or your best fit line is conforming the data. As I was saying, you the R square is not, not a very well defined parameter in nonlinear regression, but you can you can try try to to estimate it here by doing a simple linear regression between the predicted. So this is the predicted. This calls the predicted theta values or the predicted y values by using the best fit from this equation. So you can do this to try to create here a pseudo or a false R squared, okay? So let's call it here summary of, this LM is the linear regression procedure. And remember that the NLS is the non-linear regression procedure. So I'm doing this the R squared of the predicted versus the estimate. 
and this could act as a as a pseudo r squared so summary i'm asking for the summary of this here and we have here a pseudo r square r squared of 0.98 r square in nonlinear regression is usually very high and it's not a very good indication of significant models